good to see you here in Auckland. Um, and I want to thank the Campaign for Better Transport, uh, and actually Transport Blog, and Generation Zero, because the three of uh, these organisations have built, I think, an ecosystem of transport policy and debate that has changed the public conversation about transport. And uh, I want to thank uh, all of the participants and the uh, organisers uh, for that incredibly uh, beneficial contribution to our city. <laughs> My headline message for you this evening is that Labour supports the congestion free network. And, and on taking government, <laughs> Labour will sit down with Auckland Council negotiate a 30-year plan for <coughs> transport with funding arrangements to back it. And our starting point is the congestion-free network. Why? Because in our view, it's long past time that we invested in, a, in an integrated rapid transit public transport system for our central government has been a one-trick pony when it comes to transport. They have thrown all of their resources. Forget the sprinkling of pre-election pixie dust around regional state highway projects. Forget the announcement just before the election about cycling. For the last six years, we've had a transport monoculture in this government, which has been all about spending truckloads of your cash on a handful of hand-picked urban motorway projects, most of them duplicate and all of them gold-plated motorway projects. And as a result of that, Every other part of the transport system has been made to wither on the vine, whether it's local roads, regional state highway projects, and certainly urban public transport. We're going to put a stop to that. And we are going to reform NZTA, we're going to reform the Land Transport Management Act, and make damn sure that your transport dollars are spent in the most efficient and sustainable way for the good of our country. The second idea that underpins our transport policy is that in our major cities, we have to invest in 21st century rapid transit public transport systems. It's no longer a debatable nice to have. It is a must have. In a city of any scale, and certainly Auckland, but also Wellington and Christchurch, cannot be economically efficient, and certainly won't be livable, unless we have a decent public transport system to complement the road and network. The starting point for Auckland, in our view, has to be the city rail link. And I'm not going to outbid Julianne, and I'm not going to outbid uh, um, uh, Dennis, but Labour will back the city rail link. We will fund it 50 50 between uh, the National Land Transport Fund and uh, the Auckland Ratepayer. And I'll be down there the day after the election uh, with my shovel, starting to dig the hole. <laughs> and in our view, <laughs> announcement this time last year that he was had, would had a, a um, rail to Damascus experience and suddenly he was wanting to support the city rail link was just a photo opportunity. The targets that were set uh, by um, uh, Jerry's government taking the work of the Central City Future Access Study out of context, misinterpreting it and setting targets that were bogus, that according to, price, uh, to PwC were never going to be met because this PT patronage figures couldn't be met until the EMUs were in place. And the CBD employment uh, targets could never be met because there simply was not the office space in the CBD. They were bogus targets, and every day that the city rail link is not there, this city is paying millions of dollars in lost pro productivity. And the national government's refusal to start the city rail link properly, right now, is, is holding back Auckland's productivity and growth. Um, I want, let me use my remaining time to make a couple of other points. We want to integrate transport with land use much better. The current government is splattering special housing areas all over the city in response to their housing crisis, but they are not investing in the transport infrastructure to support those new communities. Through this congestion free network, Labour will invest in a busway on the Northwestern Corridor to support the hundred odd thousand extra people that are being put in the Northwest. That's essential. We will, as part of the congestion free network, we will electrify rail to 
Kauai because that's going to be a major location for new population and urban development. <laughs> the investments in upgrading Auckland's rail network have created huge opportunities for urban development, for quality intensification and changing the shape of our city. We have to take advantage of that and build around that rail network, but we also have to invest in, in public transport infrastructure to support the new uh, developments. Walking and cycling, I think the public uh, uh, appetite for increased investment in walking and cycling has really shifted. People want to see more. We will make a significant uh, increase in walking and cycling uh, infrastructure. How many seconds? Thank you very much. Um, and, uh, and I want to say finally on the question of, best, of, of benefit cost ratios and economic efficiency that we were asked to uh, address. That the NZTA system is not bad. BCRs, benefit cost ratios, is a measure of efficiency. Strategic fit, so you can consider things like building or completing the network, and effectiveness to test how good those projects are at actually meeting their objectives. Unfortunately, that entire decision making mechanism has been corrupted by a government that has been hell bent on spending a billion or a billion and a half dollars every year on, on, on motorway projects, some of which are very low value. That is the problem, and that's what we have to put behind us. Thank you. I just want to make a, a couple of comments because I strongly suspect that there is a number of, of uh, strongly held views in the room that are not particularly in line with the current government's policy around public transport. But there was someone over there expressing outrage, so I should suggest that. My apologies for that. But the reality is that, uh, despite what Phil says, we did continue with the process of electrification here in Auckland and in Wellington. And it is a big sum. It's a $2 million cost. And there was no question about whether or not that was met. Even though, if you recall, we came to government, there was a huge amount of pressure uh, internationally because of financial circumstances throughout the world and it would have been quite easy to take a slash and burn approach to all sorts of things. We haven't done that, we didn't think that was wise uh, and we're pleased that we didn't. The um, transport expenditure here in Midland is considerable. Overall it's, it's a topic of billion dollars a year and likely to do that for many years to come. The public transport side of it uh, is also interesting. So in public transport, uh, quite apart from the, the funding that was uh, mentioned before, there are annual costs in some of the subsidies that go uh, in making sure that the opportunities are there for people. So in Auckland, uh, as it is across the country, the average public transport fare is around about 46% subsidised uh, by either the state or the local councils. Mm. And I don't think that should be just discounted as uh, being of no consequence, because the numbers are big. And if you look here in Auckland, for example, your local authority here, your Auckland City Council, is currently carrying a debt of about $8 billion. So they do have to be cautious about what they commit to. And similarly, as a government, uh, we do have high levels of debt, but we also like to be cautious about what we make commitments to. So we have had a transport policy over the last uh, six years that has looked at catching up with what we thought was about a 30 year deficit in New Zealand's infrastructure. Yes, there has been quite a focus on roading, but it would be wrong to say that that's total. If you look at those years, I've just talked about the uh, multi-billion dollar expenditure on the rail networks in the two cities uh, where it's most uh, workable. But alongside that, just on a billion dollars so far, spent on Kiwi Rail and the recapitalisation program. And the idea that we would spend that money simply to shut it down is completely ridiculous. There is a massive freight task ahead of us. New Zealand's freight task is likely to increase by another 50% by 2030 to 2040. And so rail, of course, will play a huge part in moving that around. But rail doesn't always get to the uh, point where the load is picked up. So to, to, to sort of say that that is totally an answer is equally uh, wrong. So I want to uh, just make the comment that, uh, you know, having looked at the work of the uh, group that brought us here tonight, uh, it's, it's, it is, as uh, the previous speaker said, 
Uh, good to see that that thinking is going on. And good to see that there is debate. Uh, and good to see that there is, uh, rather than just the sort of, why don't you do this stuff, uh, some serious work put in front of uh, those who have to make decisions or make recommendations to government. So I thank you very much for that. You've asked for us to uh, talk about uh, particular things. And your first question was how transport projects should be determined and funded in Auckland. Should all transport projects be subject to a cost benefit analysis? And are other considerations, uh, other other considerations need to be taken into account across different modes? Well, the first point is uh, I think Auckland Transport as a concept and now as an operational body has been very, very successful. And I'd like to see it replicated in other parts of New Zealand. Uh, having uh, a very large area where all of the transport decisions are guided by one organisation that looks at uh, all aspects of it, I think is uh, a smart way to go. So it's been successful here and we'd like to see it replicated elsewhere. And it is the right sort of place to make uh, decisions about uh, the infrastructure that's put in place in a city like this. On benefit cost ratios, can I just say, um, uh, David Seymour was right, uh, Julian Genta often asks me questions about uh, cost benefit ratios. Um, I've got to openly and, and quite uh, uh, honestly tell you, I find them extremely irritating as a definer, and I'll tell you why Julian, as, as a definer of whether or not a project should go ahead or not. So if you just park that up for a minute and come back to the issues around the rail link here at Auckland. If you were to apply BC ratios to that project, it won't stack. If you were to apply BC ratios to the electrification, it wouldn't stack. If you were to apply BC ratios uh, to any number of other projects around uh, public transport, busways, etc., they don't stack. So you can't argue on the one hand that a pet project has got a, it, it should be, should have its BC ratios ignored, while those that you don't like uh, should become uh, put on the back burner because they don't have good BC ratios. The reality is that the BC ratios on all of the ROMs are positive, uh, but that's not the reason why we went through <laughs> And look, it won't matter how many times I say it or how much evidence I put in front of you, you may not want to believe that, but it's true. So we've said on the rail link, firstly, uh, it was Auckland's decision to say, let's have a 46% increase in the numbers of people working in the CBD, and let's have 20 million passenger movements uh, and both those by 2020. We actually said we think they are too tough. And so we halved that uh, number of people that had to be working or that we want to see working the CBD. And, and then we're persuaded by Auckland that the 20 million passenger movements would work. But on the current track, it won't be there by 2020. So what we've said is, well, let's plan to build the thing from 2020 let's plan to fund it from 2020 so we can uh, future-proof against what might be a situation in 2030. Now, the other numbers that keep put in front of you, when you're dealing with uh, public funding, you have to have something that you can put your hat on uh, as being a reason for doing this. And can I just say on the Auckland Harbour Crossing, uh, we've indicated that we think 2025 is the right time for that uh, to begin. Uh, no decisions yet about what it would be, but likely, in my opinion, uh, three uh, tubes, uh, four multi nodes, modes of transport, uh, depending on what they might be. I think, is that the enemy? Oh, oh, 30 seconds, right. Well, in 30 seconds, can I simply say uh, that um, we see also a trend in vehicle kilometres travel, as was mentioned here, and therefore a, a pressure on funding. But it is cyclical. <coughs> And I'll provide information to the network uh, in the next couple of days to show that that is starting to trend back to the projected lines uh, that were there in 2012. People aren't getting out of their cars, and I'll make the point too that uh, at the moment, new vehicle sales in New Zealand have never been at a higher level. So we have a real challenge to get people out of cars into public transport, and it will be a mix, I think, of improving public transport uh, but at the same time recognise that people need to make their own choices. Thank you. The reason the Green Party, I'm standing for the Green Party, is because we're campaigning on three big issues. The first one is a cleaner environment. The second one is a fairer society. And the third one is a smarter economy. 
And it turns out that transport is one of those areas where we can hit all three of those. It's one of the reasons I'm so passionate about transport. Um, I moved to New Zealand in 2006 when I was doing my master's degree in urban planning at Auckland University. And I ended up joining the Green Party um, in 2006 because at that time, the Labour government was unfortunately putting $10 billion into new motorways in Auckland. And they were saying no to the electrification of the Auckland Rail Network. And based on everything I was studying and all the evidence that was available overseas, it was so obvious to me that the greatest opportunity that we had in New Zealand was actually to invest in those modes of transport that we had neglected for 50 or 60 years. Basically, what we've been doing since the mid 20th century is planning and funding everything around cars and trucks. And that's not just bad for the environment, it does pollute our air and our water. Um, and it's not just bad for people because it is bad for our health and it particularly disadvantages those on low incomes, those who are young or too old to drive or those who um, simply can't afford it. Um, most of all, it's bad for our economy because it just costs us so much money. And um, the Honorable Jerry Brownlee was talking about how much public transport costs and how we have the significant uh, cost and debt that we're dealing with at the council level and at the central government level. And one of the things that is often overlooked is the private costs of transport. So it's true that uh, central government is spending $3 billion a year on transport, or a little bit more than that. Local government spends about a billion dollars a year of our rates money on transport. But New Zealand households are having to spend three times more than that, over $12 billion a year, just on vehicles and fuel to run them. And that's an incredible drag on our economy. And despite all the money we're putting into it, we still have really terrible congestion at peak time. And that's, that's a huge opportunity. It's a huge opportunity to do things smarter because we can get better outcomes not only for our environment, and not only for people, but also for the economy. So the Green Party is proposing a very simple plan to do that, and that is to reprioritize the transport budget so that we have a bus and a train every five minutes at peak in our towns and cities. We'd like to make walking and cycling safe for kids to get to school in particular, but actually for everyone. Because if we put people first, we're going to have a much more, not only a much more efficient transport system, but a much more vibrant economy and fantastic places to live. So we've adopted in our transport plan, and I have to say, this is fully costed. We've adopted the congestion-free network. We think that's a great place to start. And I really have to acknowledge Campaign for Better Transport, Transport Blog, Generation Zero, for sitting down and doing the numbers and doing the hard work and campaigning on something that is a fantastic idea. So the Green Party will make the congestion-free network a priority for all of that. We also have a plan for Christchurch. And the plan for Christchurch is simply to massively invest in the cycleways that have already been identified and to make sure that those happen on time, but also to allocate significant amounts of money to investing in a rapid transit system for Christchurch. One of the things that's overlooked, I think, in this talk about mobility and where people need to go is the impact of transport on the way that land use happens. So it's actually not mobility for mobility's sake that we're after. We don't just want to travel longer distances at higher speeds. That's not necessarily good for the economy. What's important is access. People's ability to access goods and services and to meet up with their friends and family. That's, that's the purpose of transport, right? The transport infrastructure that we put in place then shapes how land use happens. It shapes the places that people choose to live and work and where they set up business. So at the moment, it is very difficult to service all of the trips that people currently make by car, by public transport. 
It's just, it's not going to happen. You're not going to have a public transport service that gets every person from where they are right now to where they want to go currently in a car. But that doesn't mean it doesn't make sense to invest in public transport. By investing in a project like the city railing, we will actually shape the places that people decide to live and where they decide to set up businesses. So the targets that the minister was talking about are actually a catch-22. The best way to increase patronage on our rail network in Auckland and to increase the number of jobs in the city center is to build the city railing. We build it first. I better answer my questions now, I'm running out of time. So, economic evaluation. I actually um, did a lot of work on economic evaluation uh, back when I was a transport consultant. And the fact is that the, our current methods of evaluating transport projects, according to the Economic Evaluation Manual, which is used by the New Zealand Transport Agency, uh, tends to overstate the benefits of increasing road capacity and tends to understate the benefits of investment in public transport walking and cycling. So the reason why I give the minister a hard time over the benefit-cost ratios of the roads and national significance is because if you have a low BCR, and that's anything under two, really, for a road project, that means it's a particularly bad project. There are a lot of road projects that have higher BCRs. The reason the BCR exists is to give you some sense of comparing them so you can prioritize them. And the truth is, this government is prioritizing very low value projects, over a billion dollars a year on very low value projects. And the worst part is, a low BCR for a road project means it's even worse than it would be because it does nothing to reduce the cost of car parking, to re reduce the cost to the economy of having to pay for vehicles and fuel to run them. Whereas when you invest in public transport, you actually, you aren't imposing all those additional private costs. And that benefit is not taken into account. So we want to have comprehensive economic evaluation that takes into account the full impacts on the transport system. And that means treating rail as part of the transport network, not as some separate standalone business. We've found $10.4 billion in the transport budget over the next 10 years to invest in public transport infrastructure and rail infrastructure around the country. And I believe we are the only opposition party who has sat down and costed all of our plans and shown how we will pay for them. So if you'd like to see our plan, we have our government policy statement on transport funding in our plan on our website. And I think the best way to get a balanced, sensible transport system for New Zealand is to give your party vote to the Greens. Thank you.